Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to cover a very special type of linear inequality, the type where it includes absolute value signs. And at first it may appear a little bit confusing, but there's a certain way in which we want to approach this type of problems where it becomes kind of straightforward. So here we have some simple examples. Let's say we have the absolute value of x is less than 5, and here we have the absolute value of x is greater than 5. What does that mean? Well, if it says the absolute value of x is smaller than 5, that implies that x is between negative 5 and positive 5. If we then graph that, you can see that it's clearly between those two values. Since there's no equal sign here, it does not include the endpoints. But essentially, if x is a positive value, then the absolute value of a positive value is still positive, and so that positive value must be smaller than 5. So that's what we're saying here. If x is a positive value, then x must be less than 5. But if x is a negative value, what happens then? Well, the absolute value of a negative value is still a positive value. For example, the absolute value of negative 1 is still 1, and the absolute value of negative 2 is still 2. So that means if x is a negative value, then x must be greater than negative 5. Then x cannot be less than negative 5 because let's say if x is negative 6 and you take the absolute value of negative 6 you get positive 6 and that would not be smaller than 5. So that's why it implies that x must lie somewhere between negative 5 and positive 5. On the other hand when you have a situation where the absolute value of x is greater than 5 that implies that x must be greater than 5 or x must be smaller than negative 5. If x is a positive number, then the, then the absolute value of a positive number is still positive. You can then clearly see that x must be greater than 5, otherwise it doesn't satisfy that inequality. But what if x is a negative value? Well, when you take the absolute value of a negative value, you get a positive value. So if x is a negative value, then x must be less than negative 5, because then when you take the absolute value of it, it will be greater than 5. For example, if x is negative 6 or negative 7, you take the absolute value of that, you get a positive 6 or a positive 7, that which is bigger than 5, and so it satisfies it. In other words, if we see something like this, where the absolute value of x is greater than 5, it must be, x must be greater than 5, or x must be smaller than negative 5, because any of these numbers, when we take the absolute value of them, they will be greater than 5. And so you can see that if the absolute value of x is less than 5, it falls between plus or minus 5. If the absolute value of x is greater than 5, it is greater than 5 or less than negative 5. And that is how you look at those. Once you understand that, then those types of inequalities will become a lot easier to deal with. And that is how it's done.